Welcome back to my discussion on property plant equipment or planned assets, where our topic now will be asset retirement obligations. Hmm, huh? what the heck is that, huh? It's new. Obviously, then, our goal is going to be to learn to do the accounting for asset retirement obligations. And I think we need to start with some discussions on definitions and um, ideas of present value discount rates. First of all, it's a new law we're looking at. And it's kind of cool because it comes about recognizing that businesses is trying to be more green in their thinking or environmentally sound in their thinking and that there are costs associated with that and we're going to learn how to do accounting for them. I'm going to refer to asset retirement obligations as AROs asset retirement obligations because it's easier to write and faster to say. What is an ARO? It's a legal obligation to restore something back to its original condition or an improved condition at the end of your use of it. The law was written in such a way that it requires you to estimate the probabilities of cost of restoration. So, although we can't say for sure how much something's going to cost, we can use probabilities to estimate what it's going to cost because probabilities are dealt with in the way we come up with the estimate of the cost. The law also requires we use a risk-free interest rate to discount the asset retirement obligation to its present value. So the estimates are handled using probabilities of cost restorations and a risk-free interest rate. Interest rates are always adjusted for your level of risk. Well, we're going to use a risk-free rate when we come up with this estimate. Let's get some facts down and explore what this might look like. So we're going to strip mine some land for coal. We agreed to build a wonderful dog park on it when we were through three years from now. The purchase of the land's two mil, the equipment to do this with 500,000, so our total known costs are 2,500,000. Get some experts to come up with estimates of how much they think this wonderful dog park's going to be. We got three estimates. The first was $600,000, got it from our engineering firm. The second was $700,000. And the third was 800000 And we're not sure because costs change during a period of time. We think it's a 30% chance that it'll be 600000 30% is 600000 is 180000 We think there's a 60% chance, so more likely than not, it's going to cost 700,000. 60% is 700,000 is 420,000. And we think there's a 10% chance it might cost 800,000. 10% of 800 is 80. It's important that our percents, as you would well note, equal 100%. And so then, now we've come up with uh, estimate that deals with uncertainty in the amount of 680,000. It's leaning more heavily towards the 700 range because that's where I put most of the weight. So our estimated cost of our asset retirement obligation is $680,000. Now we have to apply a risk-free rate to that. So let's say a risk-free borrowing rate is estimated to be 5%. If I were to borrow money, they'd probably charge me 7%, but my risk-free rate is 5%. So I'm going to take my $680,000 estimate and times it by the present value factor where n equals 3 because 3 years are involved and i equals 5% because that's my risk-free rate 
and see what I come up with. That comes up with the present value factor of 0.86384. You can, being accounting students, verify that on your calculators or looking on table 2. And 680,000 times 0.86384 tells me the present value of that retirement obligation is 587,411. And I came up with that by taking 680 times my present value interest factor. So now I know what my present value of my retirement obligation is. Let's build an accumulation schedule that shows this happen. We'll start with the beginning balance. We'll add 5% to that balance each period and have an ending balance. And that 5% is going to be called an accretion cost. A what? An accretion cost. It's not interest, it's accretion. Of course it is. We'll talk more about that and when we need to. Coming right up. So we start at 587,411 times that by 5%, and that will give you 29,371. Let's not argue about rounding. Let's never argue about rounding. So our beginning balance is 587,411. Add 5% to that, and you'll get an ending balance of 616,782. Your ending balance becomes your new beginning balance. I guess I need dollar signs on this, huh? I'm such an accountant. 616. 782 times that by 5% at the end of the second year and your new accretion cost for the second year is 30,830 add that to your beginning balance at 647,620 now you put me on pause and finish this last line realizing it needs to end up with 680 that was where we started our present value. And it's 32,380 accretion expense in the third year, bringing your asset retirement obligation to 680,000. Now, what the heck is an accretion cost? You know, the only way I can tell you what it is, is it's a new operating expense. And it's called accretion expense. And it would be in your income from operations section. On the income statement in the amount shown for each year. So, now that we have our fund accumulation schedule pulled together, let's make all the entries associated with this. You'll recall that we said that the land is going to cost $2 million. The equipment to do this was going to cost 500000 and the present value of our ARO, Asset Retirement Obligation, is 587,411 and then you can see the fund accumulation schedule above me. So let's make our first general our journal entry to record purchase of our coal mine. I'm going to separate the coal mine from the equipment because I'm going to assume they have a different useful life and might have depreciation and depletion techniques that are different. So the coal mine is going to include the land and the asset retirement obligation because I can't have the coal mine unless I'm willing to pay for the restoration. So two million five hundred and eighty seven thousand four hundred and eleven will be the amount I capitalize into the coal mine and deplete through probably units of depletion methods. Let's assume I pay out cash 
for the coal mine. But I do not pay out cash for the asset retirement obligation. It's just a liability I have. And it's a long-term liability. It's in the amount of 587411 And it's called an asset retirement obligation. So obviously it's a liability. Then I need to pay for my equipment, which I probably will use units of production, accounting techniques, to depreciate. Let's assume I pay for that as well. Now, uh, we've already talked about depreciation and depletion, so I'm not going to drag you through that again, but you would deplete the coal mine and depreciate the equipment. What I want to focus on now is the asset retirement obligation entries. So you would deplete and depreciate at year end. with adjusting entries, but I'm not going to do that. I am going to do the ARO entries with you, and they're adjusting entries done at year end as well. So are you ready? The first year, I'm going to have an accretion, A-C-C-R-E, accretion expense in the amount of 29371 and it's not an interest expense, it's an accretion expense, part of my operating activities section of my income statement. And I'm going to add that to the asset retirement obligation at the end of the first year, 29371 And I'm going to do that again with a new amount at the end of the second year, and again at the end of the third year. So, at the end of the third year, my asset retirement obligation will look like this. It started at 587411 and then I will have added 29371 at the end of the first year, 30830 at the end of the second year, and 32380 at the end of the third year. So at the end of the third year, my ARO balance will be the 680000 I expected it to be. So, let's carry it out a little further. Let's add some more facts. Let's assume that it cost me 690000 to make this amazing dog park at the end of three years. What would the entry be for that? Well, it's going to cost me some cash because just because I set aside an asset retirement obligation, I didn't see me funding that anywhere. It's going to cost me $690,000. I will have accumulated an asset retirement obligation I am now paying for, but it only has $680,000 set aside in it. So I'll have a loss that I'll recognize, an exit loss of 10000 to create the dog park. It could be a gain as well. It could be a loss in our scenario. It ended up being a little more because we put in a really cool dog pond where the dogs could dive and swim and play and have a happy, fun day. This then shows you the accounting for AROs. We looked at how to estimate the amount, take the present value of that using a risk-free rate, Make an accumulation schedule. Make a journal entry to record the purchase of the coal mine and the equipment. We did not depreciate and deplete it, but we've done enough of that in this chapter. We talked about something called an accretion expense that ties back to our fund accumulation schedule. And then we looked at the exit entry.
assuming it costs slightly more to get out of this than we thought. Thanks for joining me for this discussion on asset retirement obligations. Talk to you soon.